Okay, so Jack, you go to our Austin uh, location. You've been a member there for a couple of months. Right. Uh, I am. Your hair actually looks pretty decent. I'm impressed. I I thought about that as I was, you know, kind of making, you know, like how much primping or do I want to just push it all out? And, yeah. And make fun of it, but no, actually, I I get a really good haircut. So right, you're, you're actually in good shape. It lasts a lo it lasts a, a week or so longer. Normally, I would have gone in last week. In fact, I think I had an appointment um, originally scheduled, but obviously, you know, it's it's now it's the time that we can't do any of that stuff. And um, you know, what can I say? In, in a few weeks, it's going to look terrible. And well, that's uh, why I'm going to invest in one of these bad boys right here. Yeah, well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> you don't want to see what my hair looks like. <laughs> uh, well, I, I appreciate your membership and um, you hopping on with me. And You've got, uh, we were just talking earlier, you've got an in incredible resume and just um, experience from, you know, whether it's your kind of faith-based seminary education work to entrepreneurship and coaching and, um, and helping develop people. Uh, what I really want to know from someone like you right now is the people that you're talking to, whether you still have some clients that you're consulting with or business owners is some positive shifts that people are making. Someone that you would go, man, you have every reason to be upset or to be negative or have a bad attitude, but they're finding a way to look at things a bit differently and make a, a positive shift. So, does anything come to mind that you just want to share with us based on uh, either business or personal? Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, in preparation for this, I thought, well, let, let's look at some, some data points. Mm -hmm. And on the surface, they're, they're pretty gloomy. I'll just tell you. So we're going to, what I'll do here is I'm going to set up how bad things can <laughs> be, but then give you the remarkable stories uh, that I've run into of where things really aren't that bad. So, uh, to give you an idea, we, I'm, I'm just speaking of work with my particular clients. Pr before the virus hit, average revenue increase was 8% among clients working with me for 2 to 18 months. So that's in business consulting. And primarily what I do is mindset consulting. We, we did some work years ago with Tony Robbins' organization and found after interviewing about 7,000 of their clients that 83% of success at anything has to do with mindset. Mm. And I spent about a dozen years studying that and reading the ridiculous number of papers that I won't bore you with all that mm. right now, but ended up that I wrote a book on mindset. That's very, very get to the point brief book. And that's what I work with my clients on. So their average revenue increase was about 8%. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. um, average well-being scale on the, you know, how they felt about how their life was going had gone from a 3.75 on a 10 scale up to a 7.8 within two months. All right. Now, post revenue, this is where it gets really interesting. Post revenue was down among clients 86%. I can't tell you how many people I've talked to that said that within a day of all this lockdown beginning, whenever it was like three, four, five weeks ago, mm -hmm. that they lost 100% of their business. And yet their well being score was 8.1. So their revenue dropped mm -hmm. almost to zero, and their sense of, I'm gonna be okay, actually went up. Yeah. Now that's completely unexpected. There's no way anyone in the in in this world would explain that mm -hmm. other than somehow or the other their belief in their ability to do well despite this mess increased mm. and that's that that's what we would have hoped for but you know anybody that would have said oh this is what's going to happen would have been they would be lying there's no way we could have expected that so what I started, I'll give you one story that really is, is most amazing to me. And this shows how mindset makes all the difference, or 83% of the difference. Mm -hmm. So I have one client who her business had to do with um, working with senior adults. And I mean, I think 
you know, her median age that the folks that she worked with was in their 80s. And those weren't really her clients. Her clients were the people who provided services for that aging population. And when this thing hit, you know, you may remember back one of the first real catastrophic things that they ran into was in Seattle where almost everyone in a nursing home died. Mm -hmm. And it was just awful. And so immediately all these, all these places are locking down. They're not doing anything. And her business went to zero. And so we had a couple of conversations about calming down, thinking about the best thing and getting out of, as you mentioned a minute ago, that fight, flight, or freeze that our brains want to go into when we're scared. Mm -hmm. And instead what she did was she walked specifically through the, the things that we that she'd learned over the course of time working with me. And, and the first one was gratitude. So she doubled down and spent a lot more time in thinking about what she had than thinking about what she'd lost. Mm -hmm. And the second thing was going for long walks. There's something about going for a long walk that brings some peace of mind to you. And, you know, at least you're exercising, your blood's flowing, your brain's working, good things like that. And when I say long walks, I mean at least a couple of miles. Mm -hmm. And the, the next thing she did was she started writing down, what am I afraid of? And is it true? Now, if that's all you did, you'd find yourself in a better frame of mind afterwards because most of the time what you're afraid of is not true. And when you write it, there's something about writing it down and looking at it, you realize that's happened. So here's what happened to this lady. She, her words, out of the blue, and this was just last week, she gets an idea to start calling former clients that she'd had years back, various different entities, and she makes 20, 25 phone calls over the course of three days and lands a contract that's 102% of last year's income. Wow. So she landed in one, well, in three days of, of just being creative, she landed a contract to do business in a way she'd never thought about before. She didn't have it, it wasn't part of her planning, it wasn't part of her goals, it wasn't her strategy. She, you know, read the strategy books, would have never come up with this. Her mind came up with this because she relaxed. And so this is what, this is what we were saying. And, you know, one of your questions was, how has your life changed since this happened? Other than my proximity to other human beings, which, you know, physical distancing, being sensible, um, it hadn't changed at all. When I first did all of this stuff, what I didn't know at the time was that I was going to have a fatal heart attack. Mm -hmm. And I had literally written my book and just started the process of getting it out and publish it, getting it published and getting it in people's hands. And three or four months into that process, I'm, I'm in the emergency room dead being revived. Obviously I didn't stay dead. Mm -hmm. And and what I didn't realize was the mindset work is what led me to be able to get out of there. And, and I could, uh, we don't have time to go into all that right now, but what I'm saying is, and what I want your viewers to get a hold of is right now, especially if you feel stuck, if you feel a little gloomy, doomy, do a couple of things for yourself. And the first one is stop watching the garbage that passes for news. Yeah. As best I've been able to tell, the Wall Street Journal is a, is a good, legitimate news site for where you will get facts and not fear. Mm -hmm. Most of the news sites have converted over to a fear-based, they're trying to make you afraid. The reason they're trying to make you afraid is they know you'll keep tuning in. Yeah, That's how your brain works. Mm -hmm. So let all that stuff go. That's not helping you. And to be honest with you, if you're doing anything at all on Facebook, try to be humorous. Mm -hmm. in the fa I know that's hard in the face of a disaster, but all the, the, the spread, there, there's so much fake news and junk going on. It's just stop it. Mm -hmm. It's not helping. It's not helping you. It's not helping your family. But here's what does help. As I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them real quick again. Number one, start writing down what you're grateful for and sharing it with people that you know and that you love. That 
really does help. It will put your mind into a different space that starts to relax the brain and starts to fire up all the creative part of your brain. Instead, you know, the fear part starts to fire up all the stuff that's fear. It's, you know, it's, I'm going to fight this with brute force. Well, you can't fight a virus with brute force. We already figured that out. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to run away from it. Good luck with that. There's no place to go. Or I'm going to just freeze. And then, you know, we all know what that's going to, that's a terrible way. And that's what you're seeing. And honestly, that's what I think, well, I've got a couple clients in the mental health community in the health community. And my son is, is uh, my son is a first line responder, works in an emergency room. And one of the things that they're scared about is the emotional toll this is all going to take on people and how it's going to just destroy their ability to function. So instead of that, think about what you're grateful for. Get yourself in a space where you can calm down. And that, you know, one of the nice ways to do that, that your body responds to is exercise. Mm -hmm. And then the last one is write down what you're afraid of happening. And, you know, obviously it's going to be, well, I'm afraid I'm going to die or I'm afraid I'm going to lose a loved one. Well, are you really? Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, most of us would say, yeah, I, I really am. Is being afraid of that in any way helpful? Mm -hmm. and, and once you realize that, well, yeah, it could be because, because I'm afraid of it. I'll, I'll keep my distance. You know, if they say to wear a mask, if you go to the grocery store, wear a mask, you'll do that because you're afraid not to. Okay. Then that's positive. That's a, that's a good use of fear beyond that. Oh, I, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to go bankrupt. I'm afraid the world's going to end. Nothing's going to, you know, it's going to take 20 years to get back. We're going to lose all the wealth we built up or all this kind of stuff. Is that likely to happen? And as someone who's pretty savvy on the economics of this stuff, that is very, very unlikely to happen. You won't hear any major proven economist talking gloom and doom because the economy was in such incredibly good shape before this happened. Mm -hmm. It's still very likely will come back and will probably come back pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. I believe that. You know, one, one thing that, uh, I got to unpack a couple of things. But one thing that stuck with me that I, I believe you're a, a believer in this, I heard you um, talk about it a little bit, is that your emotional state in life determines your decisions, and those decisions determine your destiny. And your destiny is just a set of outcomes that you want out of your life. So if you put yourself in this peak emotional state, a state of confidence, positivity, empowerment, certainty, then you will make certain decisions. You'll have certain outcomes in your life. Right. A lot of people want to go straight to those outcomes. What should I do next? What job should I take? Where should I go? Instead of focusing on getting in the right state and allowing that to happen organically, right? Yeah. Allowing that good decision to happen and that outcome to, to come yeah. true. That's exactly it. You'll start to make different decisions when the creative part of your brain kicks in and you'll realize that you've got extra time now. So now's the time you can develop those people skills or those sales skills or another product, another income stream. And those ideas will not come to you when you're afraid or, or, or running from the problem or frozen on the couch watching 16 hours of Netflix. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the other Three, thing, four hours, great. Yeah. Watch a couple movies, have fun, eat some popcorn. 16, not so much. Not so good. <laughs> uh, another thing that you mentioned that, um, that I believe to be true is you talk about being in this state of fear and gratitude. And Tony talks about this a lot, that it's impossible to have those two feelings at the same time. So if you want to get out of that state of fear, is putting yourself in that, that state of gratitude because they can't, you know, coexist. Do you coach your clients, teach your clients that? Do you kind of believe that to be true? Yeah, one of the, now at, at this point, I, I'm going to have to inject my faith into it. Sure. And, and faith is another way of saying belief. Everybody has beliefs. Everybody, ha everybody has some sort of spiritual belief, even if it's like there is no spiritual belief. That's yeah. still a belief. 
Mm -hmm. And that belief causes our brains to take action in the direction of the belief. We cannot help that. We're designed that way. It's, it's the way it is. You cannot help it. So a thought that, that comes to mind that I invite people to just chew on. God has not given us a spirit of timidity, mm -hmm. but of power and love and self-control. Mm -hmm. If all you did the rest of today was think about what, what does my life look like if I have power, love, and self-control? Mm -hmm. And I, I'll tell you what it looks like. It looks pretty doggone successful. Mm -hmm. you, you run with that for the next five to seven years and you will probably exceed every goal you have. Your relationships will be a thousand times better. Your, uh, your, finan your financial life will improve. You'll be the kind of person people want to be around, people want to work for. Uh, you know, what can I say? When, when relationships improve, everything improves. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just, I just invite people to chew on that and what is that? What, how's that working for you? How's your life been so far? And where do you want to go? Mm -hmm. And so, like you said, that a positive attitude is another way of saying, I have faith in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your beliefs are going to drive those actions and, and your results. Right. So, right. Yeah. You know, faith's no been more help that. you cannot help that. It, Everyone, everyone understands this example. If I believe that I need a red pickup truck and I go drive around, oh, that's normal times when there's actually traffic. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to see is all the red pickup trucks. The, the white ones and the silver ones and the blue ones are still there. They've always been there. But the reticular activating system in the brain narrows my focus down to what I believe I want. Mm -hmm. So if I believe I want to shout at everybody and they'll behave, then my body will start taking action to be a jerk. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll start leading my organization by anger and, and ma management by yelling is what we used to call it. In, mm -hmm. in the eighties, that was kind of popular until mm -hmm. um, people figured out it didn't work. And, and now you're starting to see a, a more of a collegial approach. Well, you know, thanks, thanks to neuroscience, we're starting to understand more about how people's brains work. I personally, I think it's kind of funny because what neuroscience has discovered in the last 20 years is stuff that Jesus was telling us 2000 years ago. And, you know, here, here we are. And guess what today is it's, you know, it's Holy week mm -hmm. Easter's coming up. And so, yeah, this stuff is, it, it's important to me is I find it very interesting that, you know, this is, this is not new. Mm -hmm. this is, the people have been using this as a way of getting the life that they really want for thousands of years mm -hmm. and it's it's just as available to you today as it is to is it has been to anybody else yeah we you know, were talking about it earlier about the power of choice right now it's always been there you've always been able to choose how you think about something or choose the action that you take or the decision that you make but with all of this time on people's hands it is truer now than ever to so many people that they have this has opened up a world of choices for them because there's not a whole lot going on do i take a walk i could take a walk i could go to sleep i could go get a job at at lowe's you know i could change career like i could do anything that i want and uh, i love i'm grateful for that right now in our society is that we do have we have so many choices if you choose to look at it that way. Other people say I, all my choices have been taken away from me, but I think there is an abundance of choices that we have now, almost an overwhelming amount, right? We can do anything exactly. uh, with the future of our, uh, of our, our lives. Um, okay. So talk to me about, you know, you gave some really practical advice, which is great of people that are, are stuck right now from a, a business perspective um because you do deal with with business owners what are you coaching people to to do when they are at zero percent revenue um as a business owner to kind of help make their way through it are you 
are, are you coaching them to kind of retool their business and make money now? Are you coaching them to do some inner work on themselves and find out kind of who they really are and make that investment? Like what would you, we've got a lot of business owner um, clients and viewers many of which are either completely dark or they are barely operating. And I get questions about, I don't even know what to do. I'm thinking about shutting down my business. What do you think, Ben? Yeah. And some of those businesses maybe weren't the best before, and that could be a, a, a good choice. But I know each situation's different, each person's different. But is there any kind of generic advice as a business owner on what steps they should take? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, you know, the first thing is because you do have a little extra time, spend an hour or two a day in, in getting your emotional, mental stuff um, cleaned up, you know, work on you. Mm -hmm. Most of the problems that I've ever had that led to things that look like failure were me first of all, were crap that was in here that needed to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. And second was, you know, the idea that a lot of times failure and failure, it, it, it might look like it at the time, but what I've really learned is that doing business like everybody else doing business is not differentiating me in the marketplace and I need to do it differently. Mm -hmm. So the, the reason I keep going back to the mindset is mindset frees up, having the right mindset frees up your creative space. The next thing that I advise clients to do is take a real hard, cold-blooded look at your financial situation. If you're bleeding cash, try to put a tourniquet on it. Mm -hmm. Try to preserve your cash. And, and that might mean, you know, for some, well, I, I had a client that they just canceled their humongous phone and, and several of their, of their contracts that saved them three or $400 a month. Mm -hmm. And because they weren't going to be used and they didn't, they, they could tell they're not going to be used for two or three months. So they just stopped it. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, another that had some pretty severe recurring uh, credit line debt stuff that was going on where their, their creditors were, I'm, I'm trying to explain this and, and one, okay. So where they were bleeding cash, I'm trying to explain this in a way to preserve their confidentiality. And that's where I'm stumbling. Um, what they were finding was that their monthly payments were way out of line. And so, and they were, they were stuck. Like, what do I do? You know, how do I, I'm afraid they're going to put me into bankruptcy if I'm a month out. Call. Mm-hmm. And in calling them, what they got was a, a better rate and some forbearance where they, you know, they take the money that you can't, you just, you don't have the payment now. They stick it on the end of the loan and, and give them a break because most creditors, they don't want you to go broke either. They didn't mm -hmm. loan you that money so that they could take away your business. Mm -hmm. They loaned you that money so you could pay it back. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's that piece of it. And now is also a great time to, to take a hard, cold look at your business model. Mm -hmm. Is your business actually viable? And if you've got, you know, 18 months or two years of trying to make it work and you're still stumbling along and, you know, it's not very good. This is a place where you might need to get some advice from someone who will mentor you through or talk to you about, is your model actually a good model? Yeah, because if it wasn't working before, there it's going to be arguably even more difficult to make right. it work after this, right? Exactly, exactly. If you, I mean, you know, I, I love your business. Mm -hmm. All right, you make guys feel good about getting a haircut, mm -hmm. which is that's in the history of the world. I'm thinking that guys probably always. You know, it's not as bad as going to the dentist, yeah. but if you've ever had that one or two bad haircut experiences, you really don't want to go. Yeah. Okay. And you guys make it a pleasure. Mm -hmm. And, and of course you, you deliver a good product. Mm -hmm. Well, so, you know, in, in three months for two months after this is over and they tell us that, you know, whenever they tell us we go back and 
and have fun and go to the baseball games and do stuff like that, it's not going to take but a very short amount of time that people are going to be back in restaurants, they're going to be back getting their hair done, they're going to be back get all this stuff done. This is pent up demand. In fact, you, I, my prediction is that your biz, your specifically Jen's place, is going to you're not going to have any appointments. You're going to be doing you're going to be cutting hair at ten o'clock at night. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be for, you know, big spike and it'll, then it'll level back off to normal. Mm -hmm. But you know, the guy who's, who's decided that he's going to have the mobile bicycle chain lube job is that's probably not going to happen. Mm -hmm. that, 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 that business is, that's, that's a real business. That was mm -hmm. a, an actual idea that mm -hmm. someone spent, $150,000 of their hard earned savings on and it, it didn't fly. Well, of course it didn't fly because there's just, there's a lot of things that aren't going to work with that. And it took about two years for them to just bleed out all of their money. Um, it, it, and at that point, what happens is we get, we get more in love with our thing, with our idea. And unfortunately there's all kinds of stuff out there and let's just call it what it is. It's a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. It's telling people to follow your bliss and follow your dream. Well, you can follow your bliss and your dream right into the gutter. Mm -hmm. And it, follow your bliss and your dream if you have a good idea. Yeah. And talk to some people to find out if your idea is good. There's people out there, there's people in your circle that you know that will give you some honest advice and tell you if your idea is good or not. Especially and, now, especially now. Especially now. I'm, yes. getting, I'm getting people's time that I normally would not have been able to get. I would normally have had to jump through gatekeepers over gatekeepers. Yeah. But Emmett Smith was on with me this morning. Mark Cuban's gonna be on with me next week. There are people that are giving their time. So I think that's great advice is that if you do need to make a pivot, you're going to do something new. You got laid off and you wanted to start your own business for a few years. You have so many ears waiting to listen, right? And provide some feedback to you probably more now than ever. Right. I know my personal experience, I'm getting access to people like yourself and so many others that were too busy, you know, before. That's and right. I would take, full advantage of that. There's another thing that you brought up too that I really related to as an entrepreneur and I think a lot of entrepreneurs do is that we don't like to ask people for anything. <laughs> yeah, that's we, true. We create, we serve, we give. That's what we do, right? We provide jobs for people. We pay everybody before ourselves and we're in this time where we have to ask the lender for help. We have to ask the landlord for help. It doesn't feel good. And, nope. and I think a lot of people, like you know, one of your clients you mentioned, going, well, I don't want to ask the lender for help because I don't, that's not who I am as a person. I don't ask people for help. I give help. And now is a time because there, there are two things. I've talked about a lot on the show. Two things I'm certain of. One is that we're all doing this together. And two is that it's temporary. Yeah. I know those two things to be true. And if you believe, number one, that we're all in this together, then call your lender. You're doing it together with them. Like you mentioned, they don't want you to go out of business. They have no interest in owning a barbershop. They're a bank. Right. Call your landlord. Call your vendors. And they'll, they will be understanding because they're going through the same things that you are. We haven't had a single merchant or landlord or bank say, sorry, I'm not willing to do anything for you at all. Go pound sand. Haven't, we haven't once had that response. Exactly. And so I'm glad you mentioned that because that hit a chord with me that I don't like asking people for anything. It's just not who I am or what I do. But we should all feel comfortable. I, I would think about it as we're partnering with the landlord. We're partnering with the bank. We're partnering with our vendors to get through it together versus got your hand out saying, can you please not, you know, take money from me this month? That's, that's not what's really happening. Yeah. 
the landlord is an especially good one that people are reluctant that nobody wants to call their landlord. And if you've got a brick and mortar, that's maybe the first or second, third call you make. Yeah. Um, so I, my wife and I own about 15, 16, about 1500 doors. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, we, we already know if we can get through this with a 30%, uh, what's called an economic uh, vacancy where 30%, only 30% of our people are not paying that we'd be okay. And any, any more than that, eh, you know, we're going to, we're going to be struggling. Mm -hmm. So we reached out first to every one of our, you know, people. Mm -hmm. And the response that came back, we, our, our rent collection was uh, 89%. Wow. On April 1st? On April, yeah, by April 5th. Yeah, wow. Okay, the peop, but, but over the long haul of this, your landlord knows the same thing I do. It's the people that don't contact them when things are wonky mm -hmm. that they worry about. Yeah. And so those, who's going to be the first person to get evicted? The mm -hmm. person I haven't heard from. Yeah. They haven't paid and I can't find them. They're gone. Mm -hmm. As fast as I can get them out of there. And I know we were in a, you know, eviction moratorium and all that, that will be lifted. Yeah. And at some point, this is all going to get very, very real. But if you call a person and say, you know, we're closed down, we have no revenue coming in, but I don't want to break my lease. You'll be very impressed at how they don't want you to break their lease. Nothing is worse than having to get somebody out and then wait three, four, five, six months and try to get somebody else back in. Yeah. It's a pain. In the commercial space. I mean, yeah. it was a landlord's market for a very long time. And right. instantaneously, the power has shifted. And I don't want people to think about it from a competitive standpoint, but it's, it is realistic now that the dynamic has changed. And usually a landlord is you know, fairly eager to get you out if you're not paying rent because they've got a line of two or three people that want your space That's and true. the supply of tenants has dried up. And so I think they're willing to partner now more than ever, right? They're willing to have a lot different conversation today than they were three months ago. Yeah. And, and you should take advantage of that and build again. It's a building a relationship with someone you might normally just be transactional that now can be a lot more and will pay off for you in the future. It, mm -hmm. I mean, if nothing else, most landlords own more than one space. Mm -hmm. So if you expand down the line, let's say a year or two years from now, things come back and you're expanding and you've got a great relationship with your landlord, they may be able to put you in a better space at a much better deal than you would have otherwise gotten because you developed a relationship with them during a hard time. Mm -hmm. They'll remember you in a positive way. Um, and I think, you know, another thing to be cognizant of is those of your listeners that have some cash. And, and I go back to, you know, hang on to the cash if you can right now, because in, you know, how long is it going to take us? 30, maybe another 60, 90 days. I don't know. But guys, things are, assets are going to go on sale. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you can buy so, a car right now, which I think the deals will get even better. But I saw an ad which was uh, buy a car, brand new car, six months, no payments, 84 months, zero interest, you know, low, low credit. <laughs> yeah, it's please come and let me give you this car at the best possible rate. Mm -hmm. And I think you're going to see that on real estate. And I think you're going to see that on durable goods like, you know, big giant Look at the restaurant industry. What do you think big, giant, real nice refrigerators are going to be going for and freezers and cookers and all that kind of stuff? So in, in a few months, the price of getting into a new deal, you mentioned the guy who's, or, you know, the, the lady who's been working for 20 years, hates her job, corporate America, 70 hours a week. I'm wanting out of this rat race. Okay. The, those are my favorite people. Mm -hmm. And, and right now, they need to be dreaming and perfecting and thinking, getting in that good creative space, talking to people, getting advice. Like you said, all these people that are available to them. And this may be the time that they start that business mm -hmm. three, six months down the line because they'll be able to get into it for 
70%. So instead of having to borrow $2 million to start a restaurant, you may be able to get in that thing for 1.2. Yeah. And I got news for you. That payment's a lot different at 1.2 million than it is at 2 million. Hey, and by the way, interest rates are a lot more attractive now than they were even three weeks ago. Right. And you can depend on, there is, this is one of the things about the good economy that we're going to, that we're going to continue to see. There's no, there's no foreseeable economic reason for the Fed to raise interest rates. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're functionally at zero now. And, and the reason for that is we now have how many trillion dollars of national debt? Mm -hmm. So if they raise interest rates one or two points, what that means even today is another you know, half a point or, or a point, I, I don't know the number, so I'm just going to throw some stuff up. You, you go, somebody's better with math than me, go check this out. But you'll find that the interest payment, if they raise interest rates a point or two on the national, on the federal debt would be three to $400 million a year. Well, three to $400 million a year is the equivalent of Medicaid expenses. Mm -hmm. Well, so how are they going to cover that? So interest rates, bottom line is interest rates will probably be very, very favorable for the next year or two. Yeah. So if you've got a business that you want to buy or a business that you want to start or an opportun uh, opportunity to earn more than, you know, 0.5% on your, on your investment, um, I, think, I think you're right. I think the borrowing opportunities for the right businesses – the right business ventures. Um, now's the time. You're not going to see lower interest rates than we do right now. It's it, it's going to be good. It's going to be good for a while. So now's the time to do your homework. Yeah, that's, that's really the way I would say it. You know, yeah. A lot of practical. If you're, I mean, seriously, if you're th if you're thinking of improving your life and you're spending an inordinate amount of time on silly activities get your head out of that space because mm -hmm. now is the time to really work on yourself and work on your dreams. And you'll, I, I think you'll be very pleased with yourself five to seven years from now when you look back and, and realize that this is a horrible, horrible thing that has happened, but you were able to convert that and turn a bad thing into a good thing. Yeah. Uh, one of the quotes that Emmett and I were talking about earlier that just, it stopped me in my tracks was that adversity is the birthplace of innovation. Right. You know, if you choose for it to be like, this is the time, whether you call it adversity or constraints or a layoff or whatever, uh, if you choose for it to be, it is the beginning of innovation, of creativity, of ingenuity. Um, and that's what I'm excited about. I, I'm excited about things changing for the better in the future because creativity has been unlocked in so many people. That's really well said. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. That is a very good way to put it. Jack, I could talk to you. I knew I could talk to you for hours <laughs> when, I, when I saw your LinkedIn profile. Um, that has been validated here. Uh, and I, I probably will want to talk to you for some other hours of time, but um, I appreciate you hopping on uh, last minute with us. And we're going to get this pushed out to people that need it right now. And in our uh, post COVID life, we'll be starting a new show and I'm going to have you back on if you'll, uh, if you'll come back on with me. I'd be very honored. Thank you, Ben. I really appreciate it. And I'll be sure to dress up for work again. Yeah, 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 I appreciate that. All right, my friend, have a great rest of your day. You too. Take care, Ben. Bye-bye.